A potential but totally preventable complication related to dental implant placement in the upper back area of the mouth is perforation into maxillary sinus, which can lead to sinusitis, pain, poor implant support, and certainly failure. Dental implants simply need to be in bone, and perforation into the sinus will compromise its success and longevity. So how can we prevent sinus perforation during placement of implants? And how do we manage it if it occurs? I'm Dr. Ryan Kazami. Welcome to Hints and Tips in Dentistry. When having dental implants placed in back of the upper jaw, the maxillary sinus should be considered in the planning. Now, it is not unusual for the bone to shrink after tooth extraction, either from the ridge side in the mouth or from the sinus side. Either way, the available height of bone can diminish and compromise the support of the implant. Now, maxillary sinuses are air-filled cavities and they are the largest of our paranasal sinuses. They're pyramidal in shape and typically located right above the upper teeth, extending from the premolars to the molars. And the areas that are most relevant to implant planning are the second premolars, first molars, and second molars in this area. So ideally, we would like to have an adequate amount of separation between the implant and the sinus floor. We look for a minimum of two millimeters of distance and bone separating the sinus and the implant. And when the wrong size implant is selected or this rule is not observed, then it can result in sinus perforation. And sinus perforation during the implant placement can lead to poor implant support and failure. It can certainly result in an inflammatory response as well as associated pain. Sinusitis and other sinus pathologies can occur and implant infection and certainly failure. So it's very important that the sinus perforation from implant placement is first of all prevented and avoided and also not ignored. Let's take a look at a patient who presented with a chronic pain with an existing implant. Uh, this uh, patient had uh, chronic discomfort due to peri-implantitis and loss of bone. The implant had to be removed. So before the removal, we do a diagnostic comb beam CT scan, which shows us the close proximity of the implant to the sinus. This clearly did not have the minimum two millimeters of bone that we discussed earlier. In fact, when the implant was removed, we, we immediately noted a sinus perforation, which had to be repaired after the time of the procedure. Another patient similarly with chronic pain with an existing implant, bone loss due to peri-implantitis, with a comb beam CT scan, we can again appreciate the inadequate amount of distance between the sinus floor and the implant. As the other case, when the implant was removed, a perforation was noted and had to be repaired. So this is certainly not a desired effect. So here are my tips on how to prevent sinus perforation during placement of a dental implant. First, it's important to start with a comb beam CT scan for precise localization of the sinus and also a measurement of the height of bone. Second, it's important, vital to do a full digital diagnostics and digital implant planning and a simulation that will allow us to select the right size implant, the right length of implant, as well as the right uh, diameter of implant and then, in order to help us place the implant precisely using a guided approach, this way we can place the implant with precise angle, location, and depth. And in cases where we have inadequate amount of bone, consider sinus lift bone augmentation either at the time of implant placement or at a separate stage uh, if indicated. So here's the workflow on how to prevent a sinus perforation during implant placement. Start with a comb beam CT scan. Make sure that we can measure the available height of bone and where the floor is located. 
through uh, digital diagnostics, do a simulation three-dimensionally, and select the implant. In this case, we can appreciate how the tip of the implant is protruding into the sinus. And because that is a length that was selected, we know that we're going to have to do a um, sinus lift bone augmentation to make sure that we develop the adequate coverage and avoid perforation. Design and fabrication of surgical guide, placement of the implant with the planned bone augmentation um, to uh, create that space, and a verification afterward to make sure that the uh, perforation had not occurred as well as that we have bone in the right location. Now, let's talk about how to manage sinus perforation after the implant placement. Well, we begin with a comb beam CT scan. As we talked about, this is important for diagnosis and for localization of the implant in relationship to the sinus. But the treatment is really based on the timing as well as the symptoms that the patient may have. So let's talk about this. What if the sinus perforation occurred at the time of implant placement at the same time? In that case, uh, we must remove the implant, repair the perforated site, and perform either a delayed or an immediate implant based on the circumstances. And the surgeon has to make that determination of which one is appropriate. What if the sinus perforation occurs and is loaded later on when the implant has healed and the patient remains without any symptoms? No pain, no discomfort, no swelling, but simply the implant is noted with perforation. In this case, it may be okay to simply watch and monitor the patient, advise them that of the, certainly the diagnosis and what has been observed, but just monitor and keep an eye on it. But what if the sinus perforation has occurred and it was noted later on after the implant has healed, and now the patient has symptoms and perhaps signs of infection? In this case, the patient has to be placed on antibiotics, the implant has to be removed, the perforation has to be repaired, the site grafted, and perhaps prepared for a replacement in a delayed fashion later time. We talked about the sinus perforation repair following a layer technique, a three-layer technique, which starts by plugging of the perforation with the reservoir material, a bone graft layer to occlude the defect, and another layer of plug material, reservable material, uh, as a sandwich technique. And we also use the platelet-rich fibrin as a uh, biological inducer for enhanced healing and maturation of the tissues. Now, in cases where an implant has already been placed and integrated and healed and has to be removed in patients that have symptoms due to sinus perforation, it's important to know that the implant removal uh, can be done atraumatically uh, in a much simpler technique, and it's rather a quick procedure. So here's an implant that has to be removed. It's important to use a special device, which we refer to as a reverse torque technique. By using this device, we can, certain, uh, we can back out the implant uh, very uh, non-invasively and with no incision, and the implant can be removed readily. Now, another circumstance. What if the sinus perforation occurs and inadvertently the implant is displaced or pushed into the sinus? Well, this certainly constitutes an emergency where the patient should be referred immediately to an oral surgeon for retrieval and repair of the, uh, the sinus perforation uh, as soon as possible. So let me review with you my tips on how to prevent sinus perforation during implant placement. We start with comb beam CT scan for precise diagnosis, localization of the sinus floor, measurement of the bone. We perform a full digital implant planning simulation. We select the right size implant length, and we place the implant precisely following a guided approach and technique, and plan for any type of sinus lift bone grafting as indicated or necessary. Let's review my tips on how to manage sinus perforation after the implant placement. A patient who has had an implant placement uh, 
and noted with perforation after the implant is healed. As we talked about, it's important to get a diagnostic 3D imagery, and we have to base our treatment based on timing as well as the symptoms, as we mentioned earlier. So remember, this complication is totally preventable by following proper diagnostics, digital planning, and meticulous execution of the procedures. And I think that with today's technology and availability of specialized techniques, there's simply no excuse to experience such difficulties. I'm Dr. Ryan Kazemi. Thank you for joining us and see you again soon on the next Hints and Tips in Dentistry.